you very much for coming. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, violent crime is up 32 percent, gang killings up 92 percent. We know that a very tiny minority of violent repeat offenders are doing almost all of this crime. Uh, they are not, it is not done by a, you know, one young person who makes uh, a single mistake in his life. It is done by the same repeat violent offenders that go out again and again and again and reoffend. Police tell us that often they have to arrest the same people multiple times in the very same day because they are released again and again on bail. For example, the BC Union of Mayors wrote a letter in which they said that the same 40 offenders were arrested 6,000 times in one year in Vancouver. That's 150 arrests per offender per year. If you could just take those 40 violent offenders off the street, you'd have 6,000 fewer victims of violent crime. So we're not talking about massively increasing the number of people who are incarcerated. We're talking about uh, targeting the most violent repeat offenders who've demonstrated through their habitual conduct a, a tendency to reoffend and a likelihood that they will do so. And that is why uh, we are calling on the Trudeau government to reverse its uh, broken bail system, the system that Trudeau brought in which allows the same violent repeat offenders to get same day bail to go out and reoffend again and again. We're not talking about the young person who makes one or two mistakes uh, when they're 19 or 20. We're talking about someone who's committed 15, 20, 30 offenses um, and then is arrested again for the very same reason and released onto the street to reoffend. Police tell us that that is the single bi biggest reason why crime has exploded under Trudeau's watch. So we ask Trudeau to, tr to fix what he's broken and if he doesn't, uh, we have here Frank Caputo, a former Crown Prosecutor, who's introducing a bill that will fix the damage Trudeau caused. Uh, we believe everybody's entitled to safe streets and that the, the criminal justice system should keep people safe from violent offenders and particularly repeat violent offenders. So I'd like to thank uh, Member of Parliament for Kamloops and former Prosecutor Frank Caputo for introducing this bill and I, allow, I now invite him to address uh, the assembled media. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader. I appreciate uh, those remarks. <clears throat> the Premiers have asked for bail reform. All ten provinces and three territories have asked for bail reform. Police have asked for bail reform. Most importantly, the public has asked for bail reform. As I was sitting at home over the holidays, thinking about recent events and how people were talking about bail. I expected to come back to a session where the Trudeau government would put forward legislation to deal with the issue of bail. I was surprised, candidly, when they didn't. Somebody, therefore, had to step up because the Liberals wouldn't, and that meant that the Conservatives had to. And I heeded that call because I felt it was necessary this morning, I was honoured to table my fourth private member's bill, Bill C-313. Bill C-313 is a small step on a long journey when it comes to bail. The problem we have is this. Repeat violent offenders are generally a small group, but that small group is causing a disproportionate amount of victimization, especially as it relates to firearm offending. That's why Bill C-313 creates a new bail regime that will make the hill go from a small hill to climb for repeat gun offenders or for repeat violent offenders to a much steeper hill to climb. This is what the bill says in summary. If a person is prohibited under two sections of the criminal code from having a gun, person gets prohibited for serious offenses like robbery, possessing a loaded, restricted, or prohibited firearm, uh, murder. Some of the most serious indictable offenses will get you a prohibition. Or if a judge has said this person needs a prohibition because that is what the law requires to keep Canadians safe. If a person is prohibited in one of those two ways, and they commit or are alleged to commit 
a serious gun offense, then a new bail regime will apply that will make it much more difficult for that person to be released on bail. The discretion will always remain with the trial judge, but what we are trying to do is address the fact that a very small group of dangerous people are committing a disproportionate number of serious firearms crimes. I personally have seen this in my time as a Crown Prosecutor and can say that we will be looking at a discrete group who have in the past committed serious offences to have to, to uh, cause them to be on a weapons prohibition and then subsequently have are alleged to commit a serious gun crime. At the end of the day, we need to remember that bail and bail reformation is going to take time. It's going to be a large project, but this is one small step in that project, and what we're doing is we're targeting firearms offenders for the most serious offenses, because to me, that is one of the most logical places to start. And with that, I'll take your questions. You heard that's willing to switch spots with you. Right now, this bill is quite far down the notice paper, so in order for this to be a priority, presumably there's going to have to be some movement. Do you have a colleague willing to trade spots? I'm, I'm certainly open to, to talking with my colleagues about that, but we'll obviously keep that behind closed doors, and if anything changes, we'll let you know. But as of now, this bill is not, not likely to get debated for some time. Is it a priority for the Conservatives? Uh, of course it's a priority for us. That's why we're, we're here telling you about it. And uh, one of the things that I'm saying in bringing this bill forward is that there needs to be change. Mr. Pauly, can I ask you a question? Um, I'm wondering if you would repeal uh, measures that require uh, judges to take a suspect's Indigenous heritage into consideration when deciding whether to grant bail. Uh, that's not part of this proposal. We've not announced anything of the sort. Uh, but uh, we believe that Indigenous Canadians deserve protection from violent crime. We know that the Trudeau policies of catch and release have been particularly hard on Indigenous people. We saw Indigenous victims of crime in the mass stabbing in Saskatchewan, uh, a stabbing that was carried out by repeat violent offenders who should not have been out but were on conditional release. And uh, so we know that Indigenous people and other marginalized people are disproportionately victims of crime and we want to protect them from that. And if I could just add to your answer to the Frank's answer, Mr. Caputo's answer, uh, we also welcome the Liberal government to take Mr. Caputo's bill and introduce it uh, next week so that uh, they could pass it into law and uh, that would be the fastest way to repair the damage that uh, Trudeau has done to our bail system. To Thank you. To that point, I wonder, like you, the opposition Conservatives have had success in the past going to the Liberals and asking, you know, to take a bill and move it forward. You've done it with some benefit programs, you've done it any, so is, do you plan to sit down with Minister Lametti and see if there's a way that they can meet the public demand for this, attach this to some other bill, do something? Uh, it, well, when I first got to, back to Parliament after the break, I was very surprised when, when Minister Lametti said what he said, and if you look at his first two responses, I believe it was January 30th and January 31st, in question period, it seemed as though he had no interest in doing that. Now, he has somewhat uh, changed his position, it seems, as though to be open with that. Happy to sit down with Minister Lametti. We have a good relationship, and uh, if he is prepared to bring this into law through government legislation, I will be the first one to help him do that and uh, lend my experience, because at the end of the day, what we need to do is keep Canadians safe, and that's not a partisan issue. Was this something you had been drafting for a while, or was this motivated by the recent attention on bail reform, something you've done in the last you know, month or so? Uh, well, uh, bail has been an issue in my home community of Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou, um, and it's something that uh, has been spoken about. Um, so this uh, really came to, to head uh, over the holidays is when I really started working on this. Last question. Uh, question for Mr. Pauly, uh, just about the uh, riding boundary changes. Uh, what are your thoughts? A lot of MPs have complaints and concerns. What are your thoughts? Um, to, to be honest, I haven't been directly involved in them. Uh, I let members of Parliament raise concerns about whether or not the boundary changes proposed for their ridings are, are fair. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll let the, the, the process run its course on that. And on your riding in particular, it would take in the, the riding of Nepean, which has voted Liberal in the last election. 
I, I, this is terrible, but I have to admit I haven't studied the latest design of my riding. <laughs> so I appreciate, maybe you could give me a briefing after the address conference. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. There. That had to do with the Parole Board of Canada. That's that right. had nothing to do with bail reform. So, uh, and I said that in my so, remarks. So, but, but what, yeah. if anything, would the Conservatives be prepared to do when it comes to reform on parole or, or conditional right. release? Because the measures you're talking about right now would not have addressed that. No, and, and as I said in my remarks, I did say it was a conditional release issue. It was not a bail reform issue. Sure. But uh, we, do have, we do need to look at uh, conditional release because in this case, the offender, the accused, had something like 50 prior convictions. Uh, we're not talking about some young people who have made one or two mistakes in their lives. We're talking about lifelong career criminals. And when you've, convic when you've been convicted of 50 violent offenses, you should stay behind bars. So we will come forward with other proposals to protect the public from uh, career violent criminals who are released early uh, because of the way the system works. Uh, we need to do this in order to protect the public from the kinds of uh, tragedies that we witnessed in Saskatchewan. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. much.